I want to share with you why I think Copilot Money is the perfect replacement for Mint. I was a Mint user for over 15 years and it was a hard decision to make, but I'm so happy with it. So in this video, I want to go over the pros and cons of Copilot Money, talk about its design, its features, and how it compares to Mint. So let's start out with the pros first and talk about design and the user interface. I'm showing you a demo version of the Mac app. The iPhone app is killer. It has a very, very similar design to this, and I'll show you some screenshots and videos of the app as well. So at the top here, we have a menu bar and we have search here. And if you click on search here, you can search for our transaction. You can search for our account. So if I did Netflix here, you could see all the different Netflix subscriptions in your account. So the search is really fast. It's lightning fast. Over here, we have the dashboard, which is what we're on. We have transactions, accounts, investments, categories and recurring. So for the dashboard, we have the monthly spending, and this is how much you've spent for the current month if you're going over, under, so it kind of shows you a trend line. And then this box here is transactions to review. I think this is the best feature of Copilot Money, which, which shows you all the different transactions coming into your account. And the cool thing is for the iPhone app, there's a home screen widget that will be on your home screen and you don't even need to open the app to see all the different transactions coming in. And you can just be really aware of what you're spending your money on and if it's being categorized correctly. And Copilot Money does this really well because it does a really good job of understanding which transactions are part of which category. And they have this AI feature that learns of how you categorize things and automatically does it for you. And it saves so much time. This is one of the kind of the, the gripes with Mint was it was so annoying because it never really understood the categories you had and what transactions would go with what. Also included in the dashboard is your monthly income, your assets and debits, your top categories, which we'll get to in a second and then you, the next two weeks, which are recurring expenses. And then you can click on any of these and, and go into them. But the dashboard's a really cool snapshot of kind of everything in your financial life. So I spend most of my time in the dashboard, but if you wanna dive in deeper, you can go into transactions, you can filter by account, by category, by type, by review status, by date, by content. And like I said, the search function is really good. You can download all your transactions. You can export everything out of Copilot Money, which I think is awesome. You can change the sorting by high to low. So all, all really great ways to look at all the different stuff that's coming into all of your accounts. And then we have accounts. I think this is pretty self-explanatory, but all the different accounts you have connected to Copilot Money, how much money you have in them. It even tells you, just like Mint and any other financial app tells you the last time it was updated and you can go into each specific account and look at the transactions. Now let's talk about budgets. I think this is kind of the, the bread and butter of a good personal finance app. And with Mint, I think Mint did a decent job with what they were doing with their budget, but I think it got a little stale and I love the playfulness of Copilot Money. They have emojis for each of the different categories, different colors, and you can customize all this. So under car and transportation, you could see, you could change the color to something else. You could change it to blue. You could take this car emoji and turn it into something else. I think that just makes it a little bit more fun and exciting when we think about budgets. You have your, your main budgets and then you have subcategories or subtypes for each budget. So for home, you have rent, utilities, and you can set all this up. There's a rebalance button, which you could use every month or every couple of months to, to rebalance things, to know where your money's being spent and adjust those budgets. At the top here, it tells you how much money you've spent, how much you've totally budgeted, what was the total amount you budgeted for it. Um, and then, yeah, you can click into different parts. You can go to groceries and see how much you spent in January. The design is just so nice. It's a delight to use. The other feature I really like about Copilot Money is a recurring feature. And I think this is actually something that's common in other personal finance apps. But if you've been using Mint for a really long time, like I have, you never had a feature like this. It just knows when those reoccurring expenses keep coming up. And it even sort of notifies you and notices, hey, Spotify keeps coming up every month, but you can also do this manually and you can go into any transaction, click on it and say, hey, it's a recurring expense. And this works really well, both for monthly subscriptions like a Netflix account, but it can also work for something that's every six months or every year. So I have my car insurance that I pay in full every six months and it notifies me, hey, this is coming up, this is a big expense. 
I also have it for something like Amazon Prime, which is every year. I had one expense for Webflow, which was for hosting my, my website. I didn't want that anymore. And just by looking at the in future, I knew that I could cancel that before that date came and they invoiced me. So this is what can all be set up manually, but sometimes they'll give you good recommendations as well. And the last thing I wanna show you with the user interface is just where all your accounts are located. So all the accounts you connect to Copilot Money are under this tab here under my accounts. And you have things divided up into credit cards, depository, which are just like your checking and saving. And then investments like Robinhood, Wealthfront, Vanguard, your 401k can all be set up. I think this is one of the things that I hate about personal finance apps where you have to connect all of them into a single app is it never works perfectly. But I have found that with Mint, one of the reasons why I switched from Mint to Copilot Money is like my Chase account wasn't working anymore. And then once it was fixed, it duplicated all my transactions. And I have found that Copilot Money does a really good job. I think I've only had one issue of connecting one of my accounts. The other pro of Copilot Money is its focus on privacy. And because you pay for the product, you aren't the product. And this is why they can have a great user interface and think about the customer and the user experience versus putting ads or products into the app to disrupt the experience. Experience. And there's a trade off here. Obviously, Mint was free and I love that it was free, but it was annoying with all the different ads and product placements. And I do think you pay for what you get, but that's obviously a trade off. Some people don't have the $95 a year to pay for it, but I think it's totally worth it, especially for something like personal finance, which I think is super important. The other thing you're paying for is good customer service. And you could see you can send a message to them and, you know, they'll respond back to you in one or two days. So if you have an issue connecting or in one of your accounts, or something's happening, you have someone you can go to, you have a dedicated support team to go to. And they also do a really good job of like letting you vote on the next feature of the app. So you can go in here, you can create your own, you can search for them, you can see what they're building and you can actually help them shape their roadmap on what they're gonna build next. The last pro of Copilot Money is going to be its Mint to Copilot feature. This is something I'm really excited about. As I mentioned, I have 15 years of data from Mint that I wasn't able to import into Copilot Money. When you connect your financial accounts, they only take about maybe three to four months of data. And I wanna be able to look at all that. And that's gonna happen very, very soon. They know that Mint is going away. Mint is turning into Credit Karma. This feature is gonna be incredible. I'm so excited for it. And maybe I'll do a video on this when it comes out. Now let's talk about some of the cons of Copilot Money and some of the shortcomings. The first is it's only available on two platforms. So it's on iPhone and it's on Mac and that's it. They have talked about building an iPad app, Windows web versions, but none of that has been under development yet. So if you don't have an iPhone, there's no point of getting Copilot money. The other con is it's only available for people in the United States. I think they have a country leaderboard. I think Canada is winning right now, which is gonna be the next country that gets access, but this is really a US based product right now. Another con of Copilot Money is it doesn't have any trends feature like Mint does. And that's something that I really miss. Mint has a feature called trends where you can look into graphs and pie charts of your money and really visualize it. And I hope Copilot Money in the future has something like that, but I do miss that. The other missing feature is a savings goal feature. So if you're trying to save for a wedding or a car or a home, there's no feature like that. They are actively building it and it's actually in their roadmap. That should be coming out hopefully in the next year or so, but that's not there right now. And then the final con is obviously the, the cost. It's $95 for a annual subscription. Again, I think it's totally worth it, but for some people it might be too expensive and maybe out of the price range. But I do think when it comes to all the different subscriptions we have, personal finance should be at the top of the leaderboard. And I was a little annoyed at paying that much, but I got over it just knowing the value that the app is bringing me and the time savings. So my verdict is if you are on the fence, definitely check out Copilot Money. There's a free trial, so there's no risk involved in trying it and seeing if it works for you, especially with all the different accounts you have. I think everyone is gonna be different and your mileage may vary. Let me know what other questions you might have about Copilot Money. I can answer them in the comments below. Take care of yourself and I'll see you guys in the next one.